If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Caribbean, still no sign of life. He hasn't replied to my messages for now two days and a half. I fear he might go AI next day change. Persia is bringing in more and more railroad guns. We've got one here, a second, a third. That's a medium tank, that's not good neither. A fourth, another three. So that's seven of them already. And he's all sending them to the Pyrenees. Turkey is sending his railroad gun stack back to France. He has five of them. Persia had seven and he has another four over here. So that's 11 railroad guns. In Sarajevo, there were railroad guns yesterday. There's none now. Reichstag in Thessaloniki and he's upgrading his rocket artillery. Same over here, he's upgrading rocket artillery. Oh gosh. So it's nowhere near safe for me to land in the Mediterranean. On top of it, Persia is now coming over with his battleships. 10 cruisers, 10 battleships, 10 destroyers level 3, and 10 subs. Oh, dear God. He has another railroad gun stack here. 8 of them, but then 10 interceptors level 5, another 10, that's 20 level 5, 10 naval bombers level 3, another 10 interceptors level 4, and already nine rocket fighters that soon will be able to be upgraded to level two. This is a freaking disaster. Even though he has no navy with air superiority, we cannot stop his naval bombers. And so we cannot land in the Arabian Peninsula. This is mission impossible. Going into the Mediterranean is far too dangerous. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is gonna be fun. I'm gonna take today all of Great Britain. I'm gonna embark here in uh, Edinburgh, I think. I'm gonna complete it just before day change and I'm gonna set a false march over here to Leningrad. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna send my units all the way up north. I think I'm gonna land over here in Kontinko and then I'm just gonna march with my units in direction of Tehran, the shortest way. I'm gonna pave the road with my 10 armored cars. They have no bombers up there. They have no units that can stop me. They're gonna have to pull back units from Europe. It's gonna take them a long time. Tibet will not be of much help neither. He's gonna be in Indochina. Persia, Tibet is completely empty. If I do this, this is gonna hurt them so badly. This is gonna be fun. I'm not gonna be able to uh, send my planes with me because I'm gonna be far behind enemy lines. So I'm gonna send back my navy and my air. Or I might just uh, send them to Estiakuti afterwards. That's also a possibility. I don't know, I will see. Because I can also send my navy back to Africa to prevent any domination in the Mediterranean and send my air to Africa too because we have a standoff. It's gonna be extremely difficult to invade them. They need to take Africa if they want to win. We need to take at least all of Europe if you want to win. So it's gonna be a hard against hard. It's gonna be five versus six. When we're gonna clash, this is gonna be very interesting. But so I'm gonna sacrifice myself. I'm gonna send my whole stack deep into enemy territory. I'm definitely gonna get massacred at a certain point because I cannot receive any reinforcements. I have no navy that can cover me on a coastline. I'm gonna have no planes whatsoever, but they're gonna have, be obligated to send a lot of units to Persia or Tibet and that's gonna be less units in Europe, less units in Southeast Asia. It's gonna be less attempts of incursions in Africa and it might buy the time my allies need for them to succeed in their invasion. That's the plan. We'll <laughs> discover if it works. I have no idea. But it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun. A few hours later. We've got Caribbean who is now not playing for the second day in a row. No idea what happened to him, but he is heavily under attack from Spain. I've asked Benchualand to send his cruisers to attack those stacks while they are on the coast, which he did, but very late. He's not responding on Discord, but he is playing now. More cruisers here are moving in. However, his planes are still parked on the ground. I don't know if he's going to attack these stacks. They have anti-air in them, but this one doesn't. So if you have attack bombers, yes, please, by all means. 
which is what he's going to do but uh be careful my friend because there are 10 interceptors here of tibet don't hurt yourself man the next morning all right we are 10 minutes and 50 seconds away from day change very soon it's gonna be day 15 and we're gonna be screwed because well our friend caribbean most likely is going to go ai as he hasn't answered in our chat for three days and hasn't moved any units for more than two days so he should go ai that's not good news but that's the least of my worries my worries are benchualent because what is happening i'm gonna zoom out he's retreating all his units to his capital and all his navy over here and i mean that's 73 ships man 73 freaking hell now why is he retreating all his units to his capital well the short story is that he is egomaniac he's not a team player at all he wasn't very communicative and the first time i've sent him his screenshot with a friendly advice or with a heads up which we always do in team games already since i've started with call of war in both of alliances i've been in i mean i don't know about you but uh, when my troops are in danger i appreciate receiving a ping with a screenshot like hey be careful with this Manchuland doesn't appreciate friendly advice because for him he thinks it's rude patronizing i don't know anyway yesterday he wasn't online for over 12 hours his planes over here if you remember correctly they were parked some of them were convoy trucks and they were in range of the interceptors of both Persia and Tibet. So I send him a heads up like, hey, dude, be careful, your planes are in danger. And so he sends me this on Discord. I mean, read this. What is this all about, man? He sent me, I asked you politely to cease with unsolicited advice. You chose to rudely ignore my request, so we're done. And I'm like, what? I have respect his wishes for five days. And I only notified him when his units were in real danger. And this is the thank you I get. I mean, I find his reaction disproportionate, childish, selfish, and egomaniac, at the least. And the worst thing is, apparently, he's an ex America Euclea member and he's 61 years old. So maybe I guess older people don't like to get uh, berated by the younger generation. I don't know what his problem is, but one thing is clear, man. If you want to play as a lone wolf and you don't communicate, don't join the coalition, don't join the Discord chat. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, he leaves us all hang out to dry. And he majorly screws up our game plan because the Asian coalition, all they need is Europe, which they have, Asia, which they have, and Africa, and they win. And then our African player, he goes offline. As soon as Ben Shuland goes inactive in two days, Turkey and Persia will fall upon Africa like wolves. So my plan over here to uh, send my units all the way up north here and march towards Persia while it's a wide open as all their units are either here in Europe, in Spain and France, in the Arabian Peninsula and here in Southeast Asia, I could have had free game here in Tibet and Persia. But instead of doing this, man, I need to send my units to Africa. Both me and Desert Fox, who is Colombia, are going to send units to Africa because we need to reinforce there. And I'm really, really not happy because now we're really pushed into the defensive and it means we have less resources to send to Asia. And that's really not cool. And we're only two minutes from day change. So I'm gonna set the march falsely. I'm gonna send it over here. There we go. Give them something to think about, right? They might have spies. They might know what units I have, but they don't know where I'm gonna pop up. And that's the whole mindfuck, right? And so I've sent Ben Chuland, uh, a reply, which you can see on your screen right now. I mean, if you want to read it all, just pause it, right? Uh, I'm going to go to the newspaper because due to this incompetence of Ben Chuland, of course. And so you have it right over here. Tibet attacked Ben Chuana land without declaring war and he lost five tactical bombers. I mean, that's what happens if you leave your bombers parked instead on patrol with little interceptors in your stack within range of enemy interceptors. I mean, makes sense, right? 
If you claim to be such an experienced player and you don't want to receive any notifications of danger or advice, then you better be on the top of your game, man. And if you leave us hang out to dry because you made a mistake and your ego is too big to receive any warning or advice, well, go screw yourself, man, play another game. Seriously. So instead, on the offensive, we're gonna be now in the defensive. I've already now sent my units over here. They're gonna take 20 hours to arrive. That's great. I'm gonna be disembarked before next day change comes. I'm making a small detour, so I'm not gonna be seen by the light tank brigade here of Turkey. And especially, I don't want to be intercepted by this, right? Because now he has upgraded all his ships to level 3. I mean, 10 battleships, 10 cruisers, 10 destroyers, all level 3. I mean, I have a minimal naval force. I've got a small economy, man. I only have 8 cruisers and 7 destroyers. That's it. So, I'm gonna be very happy when I got my units on land. Because if I went with the initial plan of going over here, those battleships would never have been able to catch up on me. Now, however, I need to approach them. If he approaches his ships towards the pillars of Hercules, like the ancient Greeks, they said, if he goes through Gibraltar, I mean, I don't want to... I mean, I don't want to meet this man. I want to stay far away from that. So uh, he has this stack in the Mediterranean. Turkey has been building a couple more subs. He's replenishing. And yeah, that's 18 subs close to his core provinces. Naval Bomber still level 1 though. Lots of units in his core provinces. Quite some railroad guns over here as well. Four over here, six over here, that's 10 railroad guns. Two more railroad guns on the way. 12 railroad guns protected by seven anti-air. They have dominance not only at sea, but also in the air, as you well remember. The plan was simple, man. I was going to land over here. My allies, they would land over here. Well, they have already actually landed now. Uh, lots of units are on the ground or they're gonna arrive very shortly. We got a uh, Colombia who is here with 180 units. Check this out, man. 180 units. He didn't make any air force. He doesn't need any air force. He has 40 anti-air level 3, 20 anti-tanks level 3, 30 artillery level 3, 30 infantry level 4, 20 medium tanks level 1, 20 SP anti-air level 1, and 20 SP rocket artillery. I mean, if those are gonna be set loose, all Asia is going to burn. And his plan was to spam medium tanks, stack them with anti-air, and just rush them into the railroad grounds from Tibet. You see more and more units are assembling, are arriving. It is very impressive to see these guys have bigger economies than I do. And I'm very unhappy because for me this is a very boring game. I have a small economy. I'm pushed into the defensive. I don't like this man. One, I don't like playing allies because it's a slow doctrine. And I think it's the weakest doctrines of all the four. And then I'm in freaking Quebec man. If you're in America you can't win. You are obligated to make an invasion. You need to take all the risks. Aircraft carriers, navy, the whole works. I don't have the resources that Persia has. And without Ben Chulan and his major economy, bah, bah, bah. it's gonna be a very interesting game. Me and my allies are still very motivated and we're gonna fight until the end. Screw Ben Chulan, man. We don't need you. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications. I wanna say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel.